Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you The Rose Garden, a suspense play starring Miss Miriam Hopkins. All through, Doctor? Yes. What do you think? I'd rather not hazard a guess at this moment. Sure, being here, it is a police case, isn't it, Mr. Richards? Well, three nice, quiet ladies all living together. The young one dies, another calls my office and screams murder, and the third is having hysterics. I don't know. No. You want an autopsy? I guess we better. You know Mrs. Hanson well? Uh, quite well, yes. This is her home. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd be obliged if you'd stick around, Doctor. Questioning old ladies about murder is a little out of my line. That's what I think this is, murder. In just a moment, Miss Miriam Hopkins in the first act of The Rose Garden. Hey, what are you doing, Harlow? Why are you standing there banging your hand on your forehead? I'm saluting, Hap. Saluting? Oh, I get it. Saluting world-famous ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. No, Hap, not that those wonder-working whizzes don't warrant a whale of a whack. They certainly do. But tonight, I'm saluting the truckers of America, those grand, courteous, non-pareil purveyors of conveyors who are holding their annual get-together in New York City this week. Oh, you mean the American Trucking Association, Harlow. The same? Why, they're the world's safest drivers, Hap. And they do a grand job of making our highways safer places on which to travel with their never-ending safety campaigns. They've got millions of accident-free miles to their credit. How do they do it? Well, I'm not sure, Hap, but I think ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs must be behind it somehow. Because, well, because you're always right with Autolite. And now, with the Rose Garden and the performance of Miss Miriam Hopkins as Mrs. Trimble... Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. Dr. Kramer? Oh, Mrs. Hanson, come in, please. I'm afraid I can't tell you anything, but the sheriff wants to ask you some questions. She did it. I know she did. That's what you said before, Mrs. Hanson, but... Look, I found this. It was in my room. Effie left it there. She must have wanted me to read it. It was in my bureau. Diary? Oh, I read enough, I know. All right. Uh, Would you wait outside, please? I'll look at it. Uh, Doctor, as soon as Miss Bone has recovered, I'd like to see her. Oh, Oh, it's so horrible, Dr. Kramer. I don't know what I'm going to do. July 15th. I arrived today. It's a quiet little house on the edge of town. How neat and orderly everything looks. In the distance, you can hear the passing trains. Such a lonely sound. But I shan't care now. I can stay here. This can be home. I won't be lonely. The shades in the house were drawn to keep the summer heat out. How cool it was in the sitting room. And nice and comfortable. The roses were the first thing I noticed. Freshly cut. And my very favorites. Dear cousin Amy. Well, Amy, I declare. American beauties. Yes, they're my special joy. I think they're such a proud flower, don't you? Oh, my goodness, yes. Well, now, Effie, dear, I want you to sit right down and rest yourself while I make a cup of tea. I know you're just worn out after that long train trip. (laughs) Oh, well, I never say no to a nice cup of tea. (laughs) Then you can go upstairs and rest. Oh, how nice. What a lovely sitting room. It's so cool and nice. Now you sit right down, and Miss Bone will be in presently. Miss Bone? That's my other lodger, you know. Oh, yes. yes. She has the big room in the back next to yours. When Ernest died and left me so little to, uh, to manage with, I, I had to take someone in. She's, she's been with me for almost two years now. Poor old thing doesn't have any family and very few friends. So many of us now have no family or friends. Well, I always manage to find a friend or two anywhere. <laughs> yes, I've never let myself get lonely. No. Well, perhaps some people find it easier than, than I do. You see, well, George and I were so close, not having children, I guess we lived too close. It's still hard for me to believe that he's... When I wake up in the morning, I still turn to see if he's awake, and then I remember. 
Yes, I'm sure. Dear George. He was such a wonderful man. Of course he was, dear. Now, now you're very tired. You just look out at the rose garden and rest while I fix the tea. It's all ready, and we can have it in here where it's nice. How kind Amy is. I find it so easy to give way these days, and tears don't really help. I heard a rattling of the cups in the kitchen. What a friendly sound. And then I knew that someone else had come into the room. When I looked away from the garden, she was staring at me, tall and wearing a gray dress which rustled a little. She did look rather severe, and I was startled. I suppose I didn't make a very good impression. Are you Amy's cousin? Oh, why, yes. Yes, I am. You must be Miss... Uh... I'm Miss Bone. I live here. Uh, yes, yes. A uh, Amy was telling You're me... You're sitting I... in my chair. Oh, goodness, I didn't know that. Um... Amy, let's me have that chair. No one ever sits in that chair but me. I'm so sorry. Are you here for a visit? Or are you staying here? Well, um, Amy, Mrs. Hanson, is my cousin in a kind of way. What do you mean, in a kind of way? We are related by marriage. Well, where's your husband? My, my husband... Passed away two months ago. Have you got any children? No. No, I haven't anyone at all. Except Amy. Hmm. Miss Bone, Miss Bone, have you met my cousin, Mrs. Trimble? Uh, yes, we just met. Yes. Effie is coming to live with us for a while. Isn't that nice and homey for us? It's going to make nice company for us, isn't it? Oh. Uh, here's your tea, Effie. I've been shopping for my cat. Raw meat. Cat. You like cats, Mrs. Trimble? Oh, uh, why, uh, some cats, uh, yes. Why only some cats? Oh, well, I, uh, I hardly know why. Uh... You mean you don't like cats, Mrs. Trimble? Well, if they don't scratch. You see, I, I was scratched on the face by a cat once, and it's always made me so nervous. I had the biggest and oldest cat you ever saw. Oh. Oh, but Chang is nearly always outside, Effie. I call him Chang because I was once in China. I lived in China for many years in Hong Kong. Oh, I declare. You get to like Chang if you're careful with him. You get to like cats by the time you go back home. Miss Bone, if he isn't going back home... She'll have to go sometime. Oh, I know. Why, I explained all that to you. Effie has come to live with us. I'm going upstairs. Do my picture puzzle. But you haven't had your tea. I don't want any tea. I never had special tea made for me in this house. Oh, she... she doesn't like me, Amy. She resents me coming here. Oh, no, Effie, don't take it to heart. She'll get to like you as much as I do. Are you there, Amy? I'm back. Who's that? Who's there? Oh, goodness, Miss Bone. Oh, where's Amy? Amy is not in. Uh, not in? Oh, dear. She's gone to pick up a telegram. Um, uh, Miss Bone, uh, would you like me to make you some coffee? I I'm going to make a cup for myself, being tired and hot. Um, my husband always used to say I made the best coffee he ever tasted. Oh. Jane! Where are you? <coughs> Come here, Jane! Oh, uh, well, uh, then I think I'll just go upstairs Wait. and... Wait. Uh... Here he is. Come the minute I call him. Come here, Chang. Oh, isn't he the sleekest, biggest cat you ever laid eyes on? <clears throat> Look at that shiny coat. Raw meat does that. Nothing like it. My, yes. Why don't you stroke him? He won't hurt you. Oh, no, I... Go um... on, stroke him. Here, I'll pick him up. There, now. Put your hand gently on his back. He's, um, so big, isn't he? Go on. Mm. Nice purr. <laughs> oh, my glory. <laughs> oh, see, he doesn't like strangers. He's like me. Well, uh, shall I get him some milk? No one feeds him but me. No one else ever feeds him. I don't trust people who might poison innocent animals. Poison? Oh, my goodness, why... What a thing to say, Miss Bone. I know all about poisons. I lived in China for years. Yes, you told me. Come into my room sometime and I'll show you. You know what I've got? 
Uh, no. I'd got a little bottle of key lai, the most deadly poison there is. It's Chinese. My goodness. I keep that for people who poison animals. Oh, well, isn't that rather dangerous? I mean, to keep in the house. Oh, that frightened you, didn't it? <laughs> Some folks frighten so easily, don't they, Jack? Well, Miss Bone, I... Uh... Oh, dear. Oh, Amy, I'm so glad you're back. Oh, Effie. Effie, I just received this telegram. My cousin in Indiana's had a stroke and is not expected to live. She's over 70, you know. Oh, Amy, I'm sorry. Oh, how dreadful. They, they want me to come as she's all alone. Oh, my. Well, I'll just have to go, Effie. Oh, well, I'll take the 710 train and change but, at Ridgeway. But, Amy, you, you, can't, you, you can't go all the way to Indiana alone. What no. nonsense, of course I can. Now, let me see. Oh, Amy, I couldn't stay here alone. Oh, no, Effie. Not with her. Oh, I know it's silly of me, but uh, I don't think she likes me, and why don't I come along with you? Oh, no, Effie, that's just ridiculous. You've got to get this foolish idea out of your head that she doesn't like you. Amy, it's, it's not that. I know this sounds terribly silly, but it's my heart. You know, the doctor said that slightest shock... Effie, I'm going to be really mad with you if you, if you don't stop this. Why, only just now she, she was talking about poison. Now, Effie, I never heard so. Oh, it's true, it's true. She's got a little bottle of, uh, of uh, well, uh, something or other she keeps in her room. Now, Effie, do you think I'd let anyone keep poison in my house? Amy... Don't leave me here with her. Now, I can't take you to Indiana, and that's final. If you're really scared, you can always call up Mrs. Jackson next door to come in. Will you make me some coffee, and I'll get supper on the trip. Amy, please. You didn't understand, Amy. She isn't fooling. She hates me. She does keep poison in her room. You don't believe it, but I know, and I'm afraid, because I'll be all alone in this house with Miss Bone. Autolite is bringing you Miss Miriam Hopkins with Jeanette Nolan in The Rose Garden. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Hi, Harlow. So you're getting your car ready for cold weather. Ah, uh, you know me, Hap. Old weather eyes, winter eyes, Wilcox. Why, when I step on the starter in a big blizzard, I buzz off like Bugs Bunny in a beehive. I see. Now you need antifreeze, changeable oil, transmission grease, and... Check! Your spark plugs, too. Hey, that's right, Johnny Plug Check. Spark plugs are the very heart of your car's ignition system. So when they're right, your chances of starting are better than ever, even on coldest days. You mean spark plugs need winterizing, too? Why, sure, Hap. And if you need any replacements, tell them to put in ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. The spark plugs that are world famous for quality and dependability. Why, man, they're engineered by the same Autolite ignition engineers who engineer coils, distributors, and all the other important parts of the ignition system to operate as a perfect team. And that's why you can't buy better spark plugs for your car than Autolite. Okay, Harlow. And when I'm getting my car ready for winter, I'll... Check the spark plugs, too! Right. And replace worn plugs with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. Whether you choose the standard or resistor type, you're always right with Autolite. And now Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Miss Miriam Hopkins in Elliot Lewis's production of The Rose Garden, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. so hot. I, I thought a little walk. Why are you so out of breath? You've been running? Oh, uh, it's my heart. Sometimes... People with bad hearts have no business to be running. Well, I wasn't. I've been doing my picture puzzle. Want to see? Well, I'm a little tired now. 
I think I'll just go right to bed. It's a Chinese one. I've done it 73 times. There are 2,000 pieces. Come and see. Come on. Uh, well, uh, come on. Uh, never seen my room, have you? Uh, no, I... Uh, I'm proud of my room. It's full of priceless relics. This is my room. It's... Uh, oh, it's so hot in here. I never opened a window. It's an invitation to murder. Yes, I suppose it is. <laughs> well, I declare what a huge picture puzzle. Two thousand pieces. It's what we used to call a jigsaw. It is not. Oh. The Chinese picture puzzle represents the murder of the Princess Chuloa in the Third Dynasty. She was poisoned. Oh. I'm working on her hand now. It's all finished except her hand lifting the fatal cup. Yes, it's almost finished. When I have finished, she will be dead. My, she's very beautiful. I was considered a beauty when I was young. I had every bow in town at my feet. I'm sure. But I wouldn't have one of them. Hypocrites. All men are hypocrites and liars. Oh, I don't know. Not all. What do you know about it? See this? Now, this is my special fancy. Oh? Isn't that lovely? My. What is it? Can't you see? Well, it's so dark in here. It's a little golden vial. Here. Smell. My goodness. It's sweet, isn't it? Like, uh, like something... Uh, Deadly. Kilai. Tiny scratch and you'll be dead in two minutes. Don't drop it. Oh, please. Give it to me. I keep this for any beast. Well, you oughtn't to have a uh, deadly poison around the house. Now, what if someone picked it up by accident? What's the matter with you? Uh, me? What's the matter with your hands? Well... Nothing. Keep rubbing them together. I hate nervous people. I, uh, if you'll excuse me, I must go to bed now. Oh, don't be nervous with me. You're not, are you? Oh, gracious, no. Then come and sit down. Uh, no, thank you. Come I, do uh, as I tell you. Sit here on the bed. Well, just for a minute, I... Uh... <laughs> oh, my... <laughs> you didn't know he was here, did you? He likes to sleep under the eider down. But you did it on purpose, Miss Bowen. I think it's... Oh, some <laughs> folks scare very easily. <laughs> It gave me such a fright. <laughs> oh, my stars, this can't be happening to me. She wants to kill me. Amy, if only you were here. Oh, if only George were here, he'd know what to do. July 21st. She watches me. Even when I'm in the rose garden, I can feel her watching behind the curtain. Today, I thought I'd talk to Mrs. Jackson next door. Amy introduced us before she left. But Mrs. Jackson was out. She's away, too. She looked kind. She might have been able to help. I walk back through the garden and pick some of the roses. The house is different now, even with the roses. Wicked. Lonely. I went into the kitchen to make some coffee. Where have you been? Oh, I'm sorry. You frightened me. I, I didn't hear you. I, uh, I went next door to see if Mrs. Jackson... Uh, She's gone away. Uh, yes, I know. I, uh, I wanted to ask her if she, had, if, she, if she had any sugar. Why do you lock yourself in your room all today and all yesterday? I, I had a headache. Headache? Oh, oh I... Uh, do you want coffee, Miss Bowen? You left the gate open in the garden when you came in. Did I? Well, the catch isn't quite, uh, quite... I had to go and shut it. Chang could have gotten out. People who have no thought for other people's animals don't deserve to live. Oh, my goodness, I'm sure I didn't What are those mean... flowers doing here? Amy said any time I wanted to pick them, it would be all right. We never have them in the house. I don't approve of flowers in the house. They give out poisonous odors at night and kill people. Flowers are dangerous. You don't want to get poisoned, do you? My glory, I never heard anyone say that about flowers before. Well, I've had flowers in my house all my life, always. My husband and I used to like having flowers in the house. And now you've got a bad heart, haven't you, eh? Flowers did that. Now then. Goodness. Oh, please, Miss Bone, don't shut the window. It's so hot in here. It's my window and I'll shut it. It was my window before ever you came here. 
We never had trouble before you came here. We got along all right, Amy and me. You weren't wanted here. I'm going out for a while. Will you be gone long? Not long. I'm going to the butcher to buy my raw meat. Yes. Hi, Miss Bone there? Um, why, uh, uh, no. Uh, Miss Bone went out about a half an hour ago to buy meat for her cat. Gee, imagine that. Her cat's lying in the gutter. It's been run over. Someone left the gate open. Oh, my goodness. Miss Bone is sure gonna be wild. Yes, I... Oh, my gracious. I went out a while ago... To put the trash bin out. Oh, here comes the old girl now. I guess I better ask her. Okay, lady. What will I do? Oh, my glory. I must have left the gate open again. I didn't mean... I'll tell her I... Oh, goodness. What will I say? She'll kill me. Oh, there she is. Oh, Lord, help me. Don't let her kill me. Don't let her... Oh, Miss Bone, I... It, it was my fault. The gate couldn't have been properly fastened. My glory, I don't know how to tell you how sorry I am. I do grieve for you. Really, I do. I know how you loved him. Why, I wouldn't have done it on purpose. You know that. I wouldn't ever hurt a little animal on purpose. Why, my goodness, George always said I wouldn't step on a snail. He used to chide me. M Miss Bone... I'll get you another cat. I promise on my word of honor. Miss Bone, please don't go upstairs. Miss Bone. Oh, Miss Bone. That's the last entry. No. Oh, no. You must believe me. I was only fooling, really. She wasn't poisoned, was she, Dr. Kramer? She couldn't have been. Mrs. Hansen here has made an accusation, Miss Bone. This diary also accuses you of intent to murder. Oh, oh, but I didn't. I didn't. What happened then, after you went upstairs? After I went upstairs? Nothing. I was unhappy because of Chang. It was all her fault. He was my true friend. Then, the next morning... She was still there. Miss Bone. Oh, I was so upset all night I couldn't sleep a wink. How do you feel? I, I thought you'd like to know. A telegram came from oh, Amy early this morning. She's due back today. Her cousin passed away. I guess it's a blessing, really. Such an elderly woman and alone. Well, anyway, I, I just thought that as Amy's coming back, I'd pick some roses. Roses make such a difference to a room, don't you think? Miss Bone? I just finished my puzzle. Oh, did you? Well, isn't that... I just put in the last piece. Well, that's just fine. The Princess Tuloa is dead. Poisoned. Oh... You pricked your finger on a thorn. So I have. I knew you would. What do you mean? And watch your silly arranging of flowers. You always prick your finger. Oh, it isn't deep. Now you've sucked in the poison. Oh, I don't think... What... What's that in your hand? People who kill animals don't deserve to have the priceless gift of life. That's... that thing. That golden vial. Only takes a tiny dab on each thorn. Oh. Key lie. It's deadly. No! No, no, you didn't. You just tried to scare me again. Look at the thorns. <laughs> no. No. There is... There is something... Something... Stick <laughs> Oh, my 
Oh. Oh, David. You killed Chang. You killed my lovely boy. I didn't mean... Where are you going? Oh. Doctor. Got to get you. Don't. You won't have much time. Where, where, is, where is the telephone? I can't find that. Fluttery woman. I hate you. We never wanted you in this house. You cat killer. Stop crawling on the floor, you stupid little woman. There's nothing wrong with you. Get up. Go away. Amy and I can live alone in our house. Help me. Oh, somebody help me. Get up. I was only joking. There's no poison. I wanted to pay you back, that's all. What's the matter with you? I can't breathe. Oh, now you're trying to frighten me. Get up, you're all right. Yes, yes, what's happened? What? Amy, get, get a doctor. She, she's poisoned me. was fooling with her, Amy. You know. You know I wouldn't do a thing like that. Amy. Don't even talk to me, Miss Bowen. <gasps> what about it, Doctor? You had a look at that bottle? Yes. Well? I don't know what's in it. <laughs> Mrs. Trimble could have died of fright, a heart attack. Or... Okay. Either way, you better come along with me, Miss Bowen. Oh, you don't understand. I was joking with her. I wanted her to leave, that's all. She was such a stupid little woman. I was only trying to frighten her. You did. Come along, please. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Miriam Hopkins. Check those spark plugs, too. Check those spark plugs, too. Yes, friends, take Johnny Plug Check's advice. When you winterize your car, have your spark plugs checked, too, at your Autolite dealers. And remember, Autolite makes more than 400 products for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original equipment on many makes of America's finest cars. Spark plugs, batteries, generators, coils, distributors, electric windshield wipers, starting motors, bullseye sealed beam headlights. All engineered to fit together perfectly because they're a perfect team. So, friends, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite, original factory parts, at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. Next week on Suspense, Mr. Milton Burl as star of Rave Notice. Next week, Suspense brings you a real curdling yarn called Rave Notice. It's the story of a frustrated actor starring Milton Berle, whom I think is one of the finest young dramatic actors of our day. <laughs> this is Milton Berle speaking. And in weeks to come, you will hear such famous stars as Howard Duff and Barbara Stanwyck, appearing in tales well calculated to keep you in... Suspense! Tonight's suspense play was produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Milton Berle's voice was recorded. The Rose Garden, written by Sumner Locke Elliott, was adapted for radio by Anthony Ellis. Miriam Hopkins may soon be seen in the Paramount Picture Mating Season. And remember next week on Suspense, Mr. Milton Berle in Rave Notice. And for a photo story of Milton Berle rehearsing for this suspense show, see the current issue of Quick Magazine. You can buy world-famous Autolite resistor or standard spark plugs, Autolite stay-full batteries, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. Help your country and yourself. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.
www.thepowerofpowerpodcast.com. 